and welcome to Strictly Business, which is sponsored by the Bellingham Business Association, a nonprofit organization that supports business and gives back to the local community. My name is Marjorie Turner Holman. I'm your host for today. I'm a longtime Bellingham resident, personal historian, freelance writer, and a member of the BBA. I take those family stories that you've shared around your kitchen table and help you turn them into book form, into written stories that you can be proud to share with your family and friends. I start that process by listening to stories, and we have some wonderful stories today to hear. Today's guests are Megan, Cor Megan Correa and Joe DeWolf. And before we get started, I want to provide a re brief recap of the BBA's past events this month. We've had a special event at Steps Off Broadway where we heard Phil Cicio talk about how to learn to develop internal motivation as you lead the way to success. Later in the month, we met at Whole Foods for a networking meeting. Well, welcome, Megan and Joe. Thank you for being with us on this segment of Strictly Business. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you. For us. Ready to get started? <laughs> sure. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, why don't you start by telling us something about your background, how you got into your business, and what you love about it. Um, well, my, my background is I started out with a, um, an, a fine arts degree and was doing painting and, and loved that, but I really wanted to kind of fast forward and fast track my career a lot more. So I decided to get into graphic design, and what I love about it is I would say um, all the different projects. It's always something different. I get to work with the, the most awesome people that want the littlest project to just a business card done to um, you know large full scale like campaign marketing kind of a thing. Yeah. So there isn't anything about this job I don't like. <laughs> can I can I just interrupt you right sure. here to point out that you're the person that designed oh, yes. our new banner. Yes. Hello. So that's what. <laughs> yay. Megan's the one that was responsible and worked Thank you. very, very hard to get Thank that exactly you. the way a whole committee wanted to have yes. it, which is always really tricky. Not as tricky as you'd think. <laughs> it actually goes much smoother than you think it does. <laughs> but we really like our new banner, thank and you're you. the one who was responsible for the di so design much. and procuring it, so thank you yeah, very you're much. you're welcome. Well, it was fun. All right. Uh, Joe, why don't you tell us just a little bit about your background? Um, I got into DJing probably my late teens. Um, so you're a DJ, you're Joe the Music Cutter. The Music Cutter is the name of the business. Um, there's two halves, and we'll get into that, mm -hmm. um, how the name came about. Um, but it started from my late teens, um, the first time I walked into a nightclub. It was new, it was exciting, brand new atmosphere. Um, but after being there for a little while, I walked over towards the DJ booth, and on the other side of the glass was this guy, and he was doing things with records and music and mixing beats and changing songs I had never seen or heard before. Mm -hmm. It was exciting, and I said, I want to do that. Oh, okay. The very next day I went out, started buying, collecting music. Oh, and um, about a year later, uh, I lived at Framingham at the time, I met up with a gentleman called uh, Greg Beckett. He had a DJ business. Mm -hmm. And I uh, started working for him. I was a roadie, helped him carry gear, records, so set you up. did all the leg work and you did, did all the, the leg hard work. work yeah. Mm -hmm. um, apprentice form, learned a lot from him. He was a great mentor. Um, we did a lot of weddings together, all different types of venues and functions, and uh, I learned a ton. Mm -hmm. And um, from that, all the while, while I was doing that, working on my skills and building up music collection. And then I started working on uh, the club circuit around Boston, Metro West, Worcester. Um, did that for a few years, then started doing my own mobile work. Mm -hmm. And um, then got married and kids came along. <laughs> and I wasn't the type of work for a new dad, new husband, so I got out of it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, now that my children are older, I reinvested started up the business again, mm -hmm. um, and it's been going great, growing fast. Wonderful. Um, the other half of the business, the music editing, um, started right in high school. I was in AV club, loved doing audio and video editing. Um, I was in college. I got involved in college radio, doing uh, college radio production. Um, nothing was digital then. It was all old school format. Mm -hmm. um, and then even when I was my down years of not being involved in DJ, I was always tinkering with audio and digital technologies came along. And then um, when my kids were old enough, they started to dance, and then they got very good at it, and they started competition dance. And uh, I s heard them practicing. At, like, the dance studios Dance studios, you're yeah, talking local about? dance studios, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. They got uh, okay. you know, the competition circuit. Mm -hmm. And I saw the kids practicing. I noticed they were using 
top 40 music, but cut to fit in a certain time frame. Mm -hmm. And um, I had an idea went in my head, and I, some of the edits weren't that great. So I started talking to some of the dance teachers and the dance school director, and um, they had a need for someone to edit their music, and uh, so did other schools, and there was a whole world out there for this opportunity, and just it grew. So it just opened up because of your kids. Exactly. No kidding. Exactly, yeah. So there. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it, passionate about it. I can't believe I get paid to do it. How fun. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, uh, you've told us your background, so why don't, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the services that you provide? Do we, do we want to go ahead and just hear a little bit more from Joe, and then we'll hear about what Absolutely. services Absolutely. what services you provide and what kind of training? Um, I heard a little bit about your training, mm -hmm. but, but just tell us just a little bit more. Um, for services for the um, audio editing side of it, um, where the name actually comes from, because every time I go to a dance studio and to pick up some work, they'd say, oh, the, the guy that cuts the music is here, or give this to the guy who cuts the music. Uh. So took the words, the music cutter, and put them together, mm -hmm. and that's nice. where the name of the business came from. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, started working with uh, yeah, local dance schools, cheer teams, gymnastics routines, figure skating. Mm -hmm. um, so I service all local dance schools uh, and a lot of local cheer teams. I also service some of the schools um, nationwide via online, emailing oh. back and forth. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to do no. it. So no. file sharing? Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, on the DJ side of it, um, I service pretty much the whole community. Um, so weddings, bar mitzvahs, any do, kind of events that I do are... Weddings, corporate functions, private functions, yeah. barbecues, school dances, yeah. uh, we do them all. You did some yeah. really nice lighting at our um, Taste of Bellingham. Oh, we did. Yeah. Um, in, in yep, November. saw that. I, they may even have some pictures of that. Um, yeah, I was happy to be involved in that. Glad I could finally help out the group with Mm -hmm. um, something and have a little showcase. And yeah, it was nice right there at the, it is, at the library. It just turned it into this really yeah, amazing. It was nice. It uh, does. It's atmosphere. not just it's not just being a DJ and playing the music. It's if you add the right lighting, um, whether it be for an exciting dance floor or just mm -hmm. changing a, a vanilla hotel room or function hall, adding mm -hmm. some splashes of color. Oh, there's nice. some there's can, some lighting on the screen. It can Ooh, change yay. the whole <laughs> atmosphere and really create. Um, an atmosphere and an experience that guests will remember. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. very nice. Um, and so, how did you learn about all the lighting? And so what kind of training did you get um, for that? Is that through experience? Uh, no formal training. Uh, a lot of it is, is experience that and the uh, DJ side of it. So, you, but you learned from you saw what other people did and say, let me figure out. Yes, I like so that other people did. Still work find out with about associates. Still work with other DJs hand in hand. Mm -hmm. If they need lighting, I can do lighting for them. We you know, trade work back and forth. Okay. Um, but a lot of it's experience. And mm -hmm. um, speaking to experience, when I was younger, um, I wouldn't do weddings. And looking back, I'm glad I didn't because I realized I didn't have the experience and the knowledge mm -hmm. and know-how to handle like such an important event in someone's mm -hmm. life because mm -hmm. hopefully people only get married once and they spend a lot of money One on hopes. a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I realized back then I, I wouldn't have had the knowledge and experience that I, I do now to be able to handle an event like that. And at this point, you're comfortable to do weddings. Yes, yeah. I almost okay. feel bad when I go to a wedding that I'm a guest at, and the couple, maybe they didn't get a referral for the DJ, or it was oh. a DJ they, they hired sight unseen, and yep. it's just they're, in, they're not dressed properly, they're not presenting, hand, themselves, presenting themselves the way you know, they should for such an event. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I hear respect. And, and hoping to honor the people that have asked you to do this for you. Exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll never get out there and embarrass myself or upstage the bride and groom. It's, it's their day. Mm -hmm. You know, you're there to help mm -hmm. them and mm -hmm. do everything they can for, their, for them and their families and their guests. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Megan, what kind of services do you provide? And, and I think you talked a little bit about your training. But, um, oh, yeah. Um, I, said my, I have a four-year degree um, in fine art. And I also have a one-year uh, degree um, for visual communication. So I needed the four years to really understand art and how it worked and form and function. And, and then the, the one-year degree was to get the computer stuff down. <laughs> okay. I just needed to get the computer stuff down. And uh, after that, it's been um, just a series of jobs throughout my career that has taught me uh, so much. 
you know, every, anywhere from just handling um, difficult clients to small projects that no one else wants, but I'll take over, no mm -hmm. problem. And now, like what types of projects? I, I, you're oh. not a book designer. You, uh, no, I haven't had the opportunity to do books. But you you do like objects, um, I, well, banners. I can what, do what sort of anywhere from small ads and paper mm -hmm. uh, to. Um, Professional branding, say uh, your business card, envelopes, letterhead. Logo, that, creating yeah, logos. Yeah, creating logos. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, from doing anything else from banners, large uh, format printing and production, mm -hmm. to um, coming up with uh, branding and marketing just for, you know, just for, like, say, a small company or mm -hmm. a small local company that really doesn't have the expertise in branding and marketing. But just need you know a helping hand to kind of get their look together and. Well, you did that for the brochure for the BDA I did, as well. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. just the banner, but you right. also did the brochure. Mm -hmm. Same and get got the same kind of colors, same kind right. of right. Get a consistent look. Yeah. So when somebody sees, say, um, an ad at a glance or a business card, it's your your presence is always consistent. Mm -hmm. So even just at a glance, you'll say, oh, that's BB, that's the BBA, or mm -hmm. you know that's a, a bakery that that's in town or it becomes you know site recognition like mm -hmm. everybody knows the Nike swoosh mm -hmm. you know everybody knows you mm -hmm. know Adidas or oh my goodness Hostess cupcakes for Pete's sake when they were around <laughs> so, you know it becomes you know you don't even have to read read it any longer it's more like sure. just visual and then you know mm -hmm. if you're interested you could go in and look at more details and, and such mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so that's that's my goal is to get everybody on like the same page so their presence is consistent and always professional looking mm -hmm. I'm wondering, um, my next question is what kind of people and businesses, I feel like you guys are ahead of me on all my questions. You're already, you that's great. <laughs> You're already answered, which gives us more opportunity to talk about what you'd like to talk about. Um, but um, do you, you said you, you serve corporate functions and private stuff, and mm -hmm. private businesses, and, um, and then this separate music studios. Um, yeah, service um, pretty much couples and families um, with you know private functions for cookouts, mm -hmm. um, birthday parties, anniversary seasonal? parties. Seasonal? Is there a seasonal? Um, seasonal. It's very busy in the fall. It's very busy. School dances. Um, oh, really? Homecomings. Okay. Halloween parties. Oh, Halloween okay. Halloween parties are very popular. Mm -hmm. um, holiday season is popular, but not as much as it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the busiest season is just starting up now, April, May, June. Graduations. Uh, graduations, and, uh, dance recitals, weddings. Okay. Yeah. Um, for all that. Okay. Uh, the other service I offer is um, I offer PA service um, for dance schools having recitals. You um, do the sound? You're I'll the, do sound the sound guy? Yes. Yep. The sound guy. I'll bring the equipment, set it up. Because who, who has the money to keep up a professional sound? To invest sound in the equipment. Yeah, yes. it's a lot so of money. So I do a lot of schools, dance recitals, okay. um, cheer competitions. Mm -hmm. um, and then you rebalance the sound and just run it through the whole yes, event. Yes, run the sound of the whole event. And so the teacher or whoever else, they can worry about what's going on and you take care of the technical stuff. Exactly, exactly. Oh, that sounds lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for someone who doesn't like all the technical stuff. Yeah. So someone who will take care of that yeah. for you. I know. Well, yeah. I feel like you kind of fit the same way, that Megan, that you do a lot of the technical stuff. That right that the people that have the ideas. Right. So tell us a little bit about the types of people and businesses that you that, have done work for. Well, let's see, oh my, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, um, I, I would say some of the people that I've worked with is um, the, oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed, I can't think of the name. Well, all you were working for Hasbro. Is that something yes. you want to say? Oh, well, yes, Too I worked late. for Hasbro. <laughs> Yes, I did. I worked for Hasbro. <laughs> Absolutely uh -huh. love. That's a, that's a name recognition. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. There's nowhere you can go between the hospital and, the, you know, any of the children's events and the toys. Everyone mm -hmm. knows Hasbro. Yes, I worked there, and it was awesome. Oh, my gosh. It was awesome. I dealt with a lot of um, instructions, boys' toys instructions, mm -hmm. so from eight years old to, to three, from eight to three. I did a lot of the toys. 
mm -hmm. for, for them, Beyblades, which is a, believe me, ask any child on, around the age of 12 if they know what Beyblades are and they will glow. <laughs> I guess you can tell I'm not 12. It's amazing. Mm. I had no idea what Beyblades were until I worked at Hasbro. <laughs> I was like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're like, don't worry, you'll get it. And I did. It was, it was unbelievable. So from working with toys to working with, um, I worked at a company that did trade shows and conventions. Mm -hmm. for um, for about four years. And so, was that doing all the graphics yes. that, that they needed for as you come into a convention? Right. Yes. As, you know, the, the here's even directions and Exactly, things, directionals, the, banners, the large things banners. things that we forget about because we just expect And you're used to them and you expect them, exactly. Mm -hmm. there's, um, there's one particular show that I always um, use as an example. Um, I personally did not do this show, but my company was responsible for it. Um, on the Food Network, there is a show that used to come on every year called um, The Candy Show. And that show was, um, or was a convention of all the different candy manufacturers oh, okay. in the world. Mm -hmm. wow. would, would And it was a traveling show, so it would always be, you know, say it could be in Boston or San Francisco or something like that. And we did that show and that usually is a good recognition you know um, piece for us because people would go oh, yeah I remember that and it was just it was it's the same type of show as um, I want that on HGTV where they'll go to home mm -hmm. shows mm -hmm. and I'm stuff. thinking of like the New England flower show exactly just huge huge okay. production mm -hmm. and so we would do all the directionals we do banners okay. um, all the things to make it so that people right. can enjoy it. And their function, experience. you can function through it and know yeah. where you are. So, okay. so yeah, so that All would right. be the, the latest and greatest of, of what right. I've done. <laughs> well, let's, let's move on because we're already using up our time. No we're way. really limited in our time. But um, now, what sort, I know things have been tight in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And what sort of opportunities do you all see? even the, with more limited money that people have to choose to spend, what, what opportunities with your businesses have you found? Uh, it's been challenging the last couple of years, um, especially on the, on the corporate side. Companies don't have the money to, they used to spend for holiday parties, summer outings. Mm -hmm. um, and the private side, families and couples don't have the budget they used to have to throw a big party for a family event. Um, so it's been challenging. Um, I have lowered my prices a little bit because competition has been fierce. Mm -hmm. um, but even with that, I still, I may not be the cheapest, but I like to say is I provide a value. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to get quality service, quality equipment, attention to detail at a decent price. And I like to consider myself to offer a decent value. Not necessarily the cheapest, but mm -hmm. an excellent value. It sounds like you're willing to work with people until they're happy. Yes. Yeah. We can you know, have different lighting options or, or no lighting at all, whatever fits their budget. You know, mm -hmm. if, it's, if you need a little less time, a little more time, mm -hmm. um, happy to try to work with people and So you and can custom make ground. packages for people that... Um, Absolutely. Okay, yes. you don't just say take it or leave it, here's what it is. No, I'll try to, I'll be happy to try to work with some people to, mm -hmm. to find a package that fits their needs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what about you, Megan? Well, for me, I have a little bit different of an angle um, then how and then how his customers um, come to him with economy being tight I almost feel like it's <laughs> it's when I shine it's because when yeah. everybody else is kind of um, really tightening the reins on their budget and they've got like a short budget that's when I'll, I'll actually get busier because now they they don't really want to go to the big huge ad agencies or or, um, or even the small or medium ad agencies, they just want an a la carte kind of a situation. All I need is a logo, that's it. Or mm -hmm. all I need is, you know, little things here and there. And I, that, that fits my niche. So like, you're perfectly. flexible enough um, to be adaptable right. and to ch make changes quickly. Right, and, exactly. And get up to speed and, quickly. And I don't require any sort of minimum purchase or should I say uh, minimum work like say maybe a larger agency mm -hmm. would have because they're just too busy or it's just it isn't cost efficient for mm -hmm. them to just work on a logo for you. Oh. They they would okay. almost rather do um, you know the full package for sure. you. Where if you're just looking to spend like you know just a couple hundred bucks and, and spruce your look up mm -hmm. I just 
shine like the <laughs> brightest star there is. And, and it's like, that's all you me. need. Oh, that would not have occurred to me. So, yeah. so that moves to tell us something uh, that might be surprising about your business. And well, if, if you just want to have that that's the surprising thing, I'm already surprised by <laughs> that. But well, if there's some, something that you, people might be surprised about how you do your business, about some, I don't know. What would be? Well, I think what, what people kind of overlook for, for um, my skills, uh, sometimes the, the backlash of just the logo is sometimes people forget that I can't actually do more than just you know, just the logo and the, the envelopes and such. I can, if a small business or a large business, it makes no difference to me, but um, say if there is like a local trade show that they want to participate in and they really want to show themselves in the best light and really portray, you know, the message that they're trying to get across and the products that they carry, I can do, I can design trade show booths. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty much from back to front, and I not just the graphics, but the whole. Yeah, I can I, I can get them all okay. together as to exactly what needs to be done, and even as far as if they just need signage for inside the store, like mm -hmm. say if it's a um, you know local brick and mortar store, I can do signs for inside the store, mm -hmm. and just I can we can do banners. Um, we can just if there's a new line of product mm -hmm. that they want to showcase, I can do signage for for just that and so yeah very versatile very versatile what's <laughs> what, what, what do you what do people seem to express surprise when they find out about your business Joe? um probably the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes ah. um not just so much the setup and tear down times arriving early staying late to mm -hmm. break down equipment but the amount of preparation before a job uh, i mean people when they hire a dj say oh he's just here for four hours he's, it's four hours of his time but someone who's dedicated They'll put a lot of time in before your event. You're talking about audio editing. Um, this is on the on the DJ side of it. Um, you'll really get to know a customer, try to trade emails with them, really oh, okay. get a feel how they want their sure. event to go. Okay. And behind the scenes that way, a lot of preparation leading up to the event. You so mean whether they all want top forty or whether they're a classical family or exactly, um, and and what type of atmosphere they want to have for their event and mm -hmm. you know, special requests, things like mm -hmm. that. Okay. Um, and that's behind the scenes stuff people may not see. Sure. Um, on the editing side, um, there's a lot of work that goes working with um, choreographers and dance teachers. It's exciting mm -hmm. um, to work with choreographers to help bring their vision of their number um, to life huh. and help give them some ideas. And uh, my mixes have been played at the Boston Garden for halftime show at oh, uh, Celtics. Wow. Wow. Um, Pawtucket Red Sox. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I was thrilled to be able to help with was um, in 2010, uh, there was a World Dance Expo in Shanghai, China, and I did all the audio for the only U.S. contingent, contingent attending that event. Oh, wow. I did all the floor music, all the routine music, even their parade audio. And that so you're was, the international music that was That was a special <laughs> event. Yeah, I, was, I was glad to be part of that. Wow, that is surprising. All right. Well, we're just about to wrap up, but so finally, let us let our viewers know the best way that they can contact you if they have further questions. Megan, how's the best way for people well, to contact you? You can email me um, at megkorea at comcast.net. I'm not sure if that's up. It'll but it'll, it'll be in it, the credits oh, at okay. the end. It would be okay. m e g c o double -R, r e i a at comcast.net. And that's the best way to reach you. I would say that'd be the quickest way. Okay. Most certainly. Mm -hmm. All right. And how about you, Joe? Uh, the website is themusiccutter.com. Uh, also, email is joe at themusiccutter.com. Just one letter C, the two words are mixed together. Uh, you reach me by telephone, 508 397 5606. And of course, through the uh, BBA website. Exactly. Well, right. Oh, yeah. All of us are on the BBA website. Yes. There you go gets with membership. <laughs> so, all right. Well, with the time remaining, I want to remind viewers of the upcoming BBA events. Our next meeting of the BBA will be Wednesday. I believe it's April 10th. I have April 17th, but I believe it's April 10th. Oh, dear. <laughs> we'll hear from Bellingham town officials about the state of Bellingham. I'd also like to remind our viewers that the Bellingham Business Association sponsors two yearly $1,500 scholarships, which are awarded in June to two graduating high school students who live in Bellingham. Please contact your guidance department for details and application requirements. 
for more information about upcoming meetings, other events, and the BBA, we encourage you to visit our website at www.bellinghambusinessassociation.org. And in closing, I want to thank Megan thank and Joe for being my guests today. Please check back in for the next edition of Strictly Business coming in May.